Okay, here we go. We are back with another short video. To, right now, we're going to take a look at the lower limb um, so learning objective. You, you can ID the bones of the lower limb and their principal markings. Uh, first thing we should know, there are actually 30 bones in the lower limb, um, including, of course, the feet. We're not going to look at the feet right now. We'll do that uh, in class, but there are 30 bones. We're going to take a look at four of them right now. All right, the first one is, of course, the femur. That's the big bone that everybody knows usually, the femur. It is the largest, heaviest, strongest bone in the body, right? It's your thigh bone, okay? Some features that we should know about our femur is the head. That is this portion right there, or let me circle it up here, the head. Notice here it's kind of bluish and kind of jelly or shiny. There's articular cartilage surrounding it, that hyaline cartilage that allows it to smoothly glide inside that um, what's the name of that socket? Do we remember that socket name? Remember, it was acetabulum, okay, or vinegar cup is the name of that little guy. So the head of the femur fits right there. The next piece is something called the fovea capitis. It's kind of interesting. You might notice right here with my cursors, I'm going to point an arrow to it. Okay, there's a little dimple. You'll notice it when you get into class. There's a little dimple on the head of the femur. It's called the fovea capitis. It is an attachment point for a ligament up into the hip socket. Okay, our next feature is the neck. It's this narrow portion here of the femur. Okay, when a lot of people break their hip, you hear of like old ladies breaking their hip. Um, they're actually not breaking their pelvic girdle. They actually snap the neck off of their femur, and that's what has to get replaced when they have hip replacement surgery. They're not messing with the ilium and ischium. It's right here, okay, so it's a little bit lower. All right, so that's the neck. All right, the next feature we're looking at is the greater trochanter. So you might see this bump right here. Let me change colors here. There's a bump right here, and there's a bump right there. Notice these two bumps right here, a bump here, and a bump there. On our old school picture here, bump here, bump here. All right, so this bigger bump is the greater trochanter. The smaller bump, you might guess, is the lesser trochanter. So greater and lesser trochanter. Anytime you see a big bump on a bone or a big process, you should be thinking to yourself, muscle, tendon, ligament attachment things are going to be attached to here and in this case a lot of the big muscles of your leg are going to be attached right here muscles like your quadriceps or your um, hamstring and things like that these big muscles are going to be attached here to these processes of the femur okay next feature is the medial and lateral condyles so the best way let's look down way down low here you see this little place i'm circling a condyle is simply just a rounded projection that's going to allow it to articulate with another bone. In this case, this is going to articulate with the tibia. So you should see these two kind of roundy projections. We've learned about the occipital condyles that was up on the head. You've learned about the um, condyles that were on the humerus. Granted, they were called something, the capitulum and the trochlea. Well, here we just simply call them medial and lateral condyle. All right. So if there's such a thing as a condyle, there must be something above the condyle, if you can guess what that might be, these kind of bumps on the side. If you guessed it, it's the medial and lateral epicondyles, okay? They're above the condyles. And again, this is ligament tendon attachment points for muscles and bones and stuff, okay? You'll see these two, the medial and lateral epicondyle. In fact, where I mentioned earlier about IT band syndrome, the iliotibial band, on the lateral side, this lateral epicondyle rubs on that tendon, so you get this weird tendonitis on the side of your knee. All right, that's a little fun overuse injury that distance runners get to deal with. Okay, let's move on to the patella. All right, patella, also known as the kneecap. Okay, this is the kneecap. It's a bone that forms within the tendon of the quadriceps. Okay, so we talked about this earlier. Babies are born without a patella. They don't walk yet, so this bone has not formed. Okay, so it kind of looks like this, a little like kind of, I don't know, acornish shaped little bone. The front of it just looks like bone, and the back will be all smooth. And this is, they're even saying, if you can read that articular surface, it's cartilage, it's going to be rubbing there. All right, it's going to be protecting this joint right behind it, right? You're going to see how the, how the kneecap is kind of sitting here just like this. It protects the joint behind it. It also improves leverage for your quadricep muscle. All right, so it's just kind of free floating here. Let's look at another image. You can see the femur coming down. You see the tibia. And again, right here, let's change color so it kind of stands out. Right there, you can see the patella, and it's kind of embedded in this tendon that's attached to the tibia. All right, 
you're in luck. There are no features you need to know for the patella. Just know what it is. Alrighty. So let's move on to the next bone. The next bone is the tibia. All right, tibia. Okay. Important that we remember it's tibia, not tibula. Okay. People get weird confusions with the tibia and the fibula. They sound similar, but they're different. This is the weight-bearing bone of the lower leg. All right. So if you look at the lower leg, this your shin bone. You can maybe look at it that way. Also known as your shin. Okay. Your shin bone is your tibia. Okay, if you feel on the inside of your foot, on the inside of your, I mean, your lower leg, the hard bone that you feel there is your shin. Okay, so some features that you should know, the medial and lateral condyles, you can see them, they're already on this little page here. These little smooth projections, smooth areas that are going to articulate with the femur. You can actually see how that articulates with the femur right there, and you have some condyles to receive the condyles of the femur. Okay, you have something else called the tibial tuberosity. Okay. It's going to be a little bump that's going to be right here on the front. In fact, you could probably feel it on your own body right now, the tibial tuberosity. Some people have that condition known as Osgood Slaughter's, um, where it's like a, you'll get pain right here on the front of your knee. Um, and it's actually it's like the bone is tearing itself apart as the, tib, as the tendon pulls too hard. So um, you get like this really big bony projection. There are a lot of people, very common for people to get that, um, it, that condition. All right, uh, the last thing that we need to know about the tibia is something called the medial malleolus. Look way down here. There is a bump right here. If you've ever noticed, if you look at your shoes, let me draw a little shoe for you here. Your shoes always have, oh, that's nice. Shoes always have this little indent, right? Why is there this indent? It's for your medial or lateral malleolus, in this case, medial. So it's that ball that you feel in your ankle, okay? It's that medial malleolus. It's going to help control our foot. And again, tendon, ligaments, all that stuff connecting to it. All righty. Last, last bone here, the lower limb, is the fibula. All right, fibula, not fibia. Okay, get that straight. It's fibula. It has the law in it. Okay, this is the non-weight-bearing bone. It does not bear any weight. So you can actually break your leg so long as you just broke this bone. If you're breaking the fibula, you could still walk, but you got to be kind of careful. You're kind of losing some stability there. Uh, it is actually lateral to the tibia. So here's how we're going to remember it. Fibula is lateral. Nice. Fibulateral, okay? Fibula is lateral to the tibia, all right? And there, of course, is going to be a head. And down here, I mentioned earlier, we have the lateral malleolus. So let's look at a picture of both of them together. Tibia is in the middle. Fibula is on the outside. And again, it's non-weight bearing. This, in fact, is also the bone that they use if they need to do a bone graft. Let's say somebody shatters their bone in an accident and they need to actually graft in bone to help reconstruct the area. This is where they will steal the bone from is the fibula because it's not as critical. You can have a broken fibula and um, not be completely in a wheelchair or anything, okay? So fibula, fibula is lateral, and I think that's the end of the show. So pretty quick, we're ready for going. Oh, never mind. I do have one last little picture. There you go. Yeah, there's the two of them together. <laughs> awesome.